What other friends? Um, uh, uh, Mr. Noah. Um, Mr. Noah. Hey, what? What? <laughs> Mr. Noah, did, did I do it? Did I bring back 205 Live? Did I do it? I snapped my fingers. I got the gauntlet. Did, did I do it? Is 205 Live back? Did you get, where did you get the infinity garden? How you don't thought us? <laughs> We're back, what? bitches! Oh. All right. <laughs>
but he's not done. He's not done with Drew Gulak by a long shot. I'm ready for the rematch. I can't wait to see when it's going to happen and see if it's going to be a different story. Absolutely. I mean, this match went literally out the gate. Ding, ding. Drew Gulak going for his standard, it seems, in Cruiserweight Championship matches. The running dropkick, Leo Rush immediately goes out of the way, and Leo Rush pulls off an insane standing Spanish fly out of nowhere. I barely kept up with this. Freaking tope kick and Asai Moonsaw coming Leo Rush, the guy gets going. He's hard to stop. That dude is incredible. Following this, we get a DDT counter because Gulak, of course, he had the strength advantage in this match, while Leo Rush clearly had the speed advantage in this match. He gets slammed face first into the mat and then closed line out of his, into the corner. And then we get a quick cover from Gulak. Nice one count. Establishing control finally here. Gulak in control for the portion of this. And then he relies on what brought him to the dance. Submissions. Drew Gulak is one of the most strongly based mat submission wrestlers in the game today. Got style and all that type of stuff. Shout out to one of my favorites in New Japan. Anyway, we'll talk more about that in a different thing. But anyway, after this, there was Cradle, Rofru, Crucifix, but he maintains an armbar hold during this entire thing, thus working over Leo Rush's left arm. Your left arm is not supposed to bend like that. That would look mm-hmm. disturbing. Roll up into a submission and then exchange chops from both men. You could tell how much both men wanted this title, especially because Leo Rush, this was his first true title opportunity since being signed to NXT, WWE, whatever you want to call it. Anyway... There's a slam, then there's dueling leg locks. Leo Rush trying to get the better Drew Gulak, but Drew Gulak had the better position, so of course he maintained the hold stronger here. And then we get an interesting spot where both men are on the top rope. Gulak, again, reinventing himself as always. He's not safe to sound feet on the ground. He tries to pull off some sort of offensive maneuver, and both men have an awkward landing. Not sure who got the worst, but Gulak lands on the apron, ribs first, and Leo Rush, he goes all the way from the top to the floor after falling on some security guard's body. Sitting at ringside. Yeah, I wonder if that was planted. But anyway, Leo Rush, though, he gets some kicks in following this as we come back from a commercial break. I am not used to NXT with commercials. Even on the network for the little fade in, fade out, which I find much better than watching USA commercials for Christian Knows Best, Temptation Island, who knows what other bullshit's on there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care about those dramas. Fuck you. Anyway, following this, though, we come back. We get Leo Rush some kicks. He gets a flip stand and then... Gulak wipes him out with a freaking lariat into a near fall. Good lord. But we get a jump up. Again, Gulak, he's so crappy, he knows that Leo Rush is going to do that. He tries to roll him up. But Leo, knowing Gulak, apparently he watched Stomping Grounds and also Gulak's past championship matches. He rolls him up, matchbook cover, not enough. Jessica Carr, by the way, very smart ref in this match, literally twisting out of the corner, getting out of the way. She is one of the best referees right now, in my opinion, in all of the WWE. Young up-and-comer, too. Shout out to her. Great job in this match. Anyway, following this, we get the attempted uh, stunner, which I learned now is called the come-up, but Gulak, I'm like, he's going to do it! He's going to do it! He traps Leo Rush into a gulag for mm-hmm. the most of this match, but somehow Leo Rush, being the shifty little crafty guy he is, he figures out a way to scrum out of it and almost rolls up in on Gulak, shoulders down, almost gets the three. Not enough yet. And then Leo Rush, he goes for a sleeper of his own, basically playing to Drew Gulak's game. Again, these two know each other very well. As Gulak said, this is a ghost from his past. And then following this, though, Gulak, with the strength advantage, he finally gets Leo Rush up towards right position. You know what's coming. Cyclone crash. That's it. One, two, foot on the rope. you got to remember to grab the freaking out inside leg. Outside leg. I don't know what you call it from that perspective. It probably was the outside leg because, yeah, it was the left leg. But, hey, Gulak, being the crafty breath he is, he's like, no, pull him a little further into the ring. One, only gets a two count. And then following this, we go up to the top rope again where Gulak's trying to do, it looks like a superplex, Leo Rush fighting for his life. And Leo Rush finally gets Gulak off. Gulak comes back up again. Nope, fights him off again. And has Gulak just down enough for a splash. Shout out to, to the deceased Eddie Guerrero who reached the elevator birthday. The big influence, by the way, on Leo Rush, you can tell, among many others. Anyway, Leo Rush, he gets a splash, and they're not as far as splash, but a crossbody type splash. Keeps Gulak down long enough. Goes back up to the rope. Once again, that was on the ribs, too. Working on the injury prone section of Drew Gulak, and he finally hits his come-up stunner. That is a very unique stunner, by the way. Mm-hmm. And then goes up to the top rope and hits his final hour splash. One, two, three. Leo Rush finally becomes 
a champion WWE, all the sacrifice, all the struggle, all the controversy you could say against him, both from his point and the company's point, it's finally all alleviated and all the work pays off. Leo Rush becomes the new and the 12th Cruiserweight champion and the first ever named NXT Cruiserweight champion. Congratulations to him. An incredibly hot opener. Regal comes out, presents the title. Gulak only takes it, but then again, you get the stare down. Now, I can't read lists, but you heard what Miles said later on. Leo told Gulak, hey, I beat you, man. I beat you fair and square. Mm -hmm. And basically, Gulak, he gives him the title, shakes his hand, goes out of the ring. Leo Rush has done it. Congratulations. And then, like you said, following the exclusives, which we'll talk about later when we get into 205 Live, we get Gulak's reaction and Leo Rush's reaction. If this is really the start to a new era in the Cruiserweight division underneath the NXT banner, I so far am thoroughly behind it and very happy. What an amazing match. And congratulations, Leo Rush, on finally reaching the point that you wanted, a champion in WWE. Man. So with that, we then go into officially the first Friday night premiere of 205 Live, emanating from Las Vegas, Nevada. And basically, we get, like I said, a cinematic recap of this Cruiserweight Championship match from Wednesday. And we basically get both men's exclusives. Drew Gulak says, it's disappointing, but I am the law. Changes the rule. And Leo says, I'm going to do everything I can to win this. This is my destiny. And then we go right into the show. We'll go more into those exclusives a little further later. And we learn finally what our commentary team is for 205 Live. A two-person booth. Aiden Inglis remains on, and new play-by-play -play commentator, Tom Phillips. So it looks like after all these announced team change-ups, the one left out on the code, unless he's doing a main event, I don't know, I don't watch that fucking show. I can't believe that's a fucking show. Byron Sack, <laughs> come on, you and I both know main events full of shit. Anyway, I digress. So we go right into the show, we go right into our opening match. It's a rematch from the last 205 Live, and it is Drew Gulak and Tony Nese versus the one-two connection, Danny Birch and Oni Lorcan. Initially, out of the gate, we get one two chance. And then, ding ding, match. By the way, I love the two of our left colors in that new SmackDown set. Fits perfectly. Mm -hmm. Chris, what was your thoughts on this opening match? <clears throat> uh, what I liked is we got the rematch. I, I wanted to see these two, two uh, these four men face each other again after we saw a couple weeks back where Lorcan and Birch were able to get the win. I, had, I wanted to see the rematch. I wanted to see what Nice and Gulak were going to do, how they were going to rebound. Now it's a little different. Gulak doesn't have 10 pounds of gold around his waist anymore, so <laughs> he's got that on his mind. He's got a lot of things on his mind. Nice, like I said, he performs at a high level. That 450 splash he did looked brutal, looked like he actually injured him. Yeah. Um, that, like I said, this was a great match. I love the. I actually like this match better than I did the first match. I love the finish, Lorcan and Birch winning again. I'm hoping if there are going with to it with SmackDown. I know we got the draft going on, so we don't know what's happening yet with them on Monday that. night. Yeah. But but I'm hoping like this will lead them some time to get a, a tag team title shot. Hopefully at the SmackDown tag titles with the revival Lurkin and Birch, and then they can bring those tag titles to 205 Live. And let's have some interesting matches with this. That's what I'm hoping they're building up to with Lurkin and Birch getting a second win over Tony Nese and Drew Gulak. Considering the current state of the NXT tag team division and the fact they lost one of their prime teams in the Street Profits, finally now drafted to Raw. Good luck, boys. Yeah, I completely agree. And, and again, Danny Burch and Logan, they made themselves as a real tattoo to take seriously back when they took on the Undisputed Era at NXT TakeOver Chicago, too, I believe. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, I thought this was a good opening match. We get one, two chance. Needs takes control initially out of the gate of, on both men. There was a weird dimming effect, though. I don't know if you saw it on the network. Was it like the network going out for a moment, or was it like the lights flickering? I don't know what that was about. That was weird to me. Anyway... Nice, he pulls off a moonsault first, corner moonsault. And then Birch, though, he eventually gets attacked. He takes control. But then distraction called by Drew Gulak. The heels take control. We get one, two chance. They were definitely behind Birch and uh, Lorkin in this match. By the way, why is Birch named on Lorkin's Titan Tron? I'm just saying. Maybe, yeah. maybe they just moved it too quick. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. spin around kick by Tony Nice. Beautiful move. Very um, innovative. Into a nice near fall. 
Gulak and Nice, they may take control for most of this match. And then you hear commentary bringing up points about, okay, Dorian Nice, this is all he's ever been. He just tags along. Okay, he tagged with Gulak since the beginning. He then tagged along with Buddy Murphy. And now he's tagging still with Gulak. But Gulak no longer has, like you say, 10 pounds of gold. Shout out to the NWA. So it's like, what is Tony Nese really doing here? Is there any more now that Tony Nese and Gulak being together anymore? So I like the story continuity that was being portrayed here so far by coming. I thought Tom Phillips did a pretty darn decent job. Better than Michael Cole, anyway. Anyway, following this, though, they talk about also the draft, how it could impact the uh, Cruiser division, how it already has with Lucha House Party now being drafted exclusively to SmackDown on Fox. So best of luck to them. Anyway, only though he finally gets a hot tag and, well, Fury broke loose. We get freaking uppercuts, and Owen goes over the top rope, not once, but twice, on Gulak. And then it's like he's freaking channeling, like, I don't know, spirit energy from the crowd or something, grasping for the sun with that face. And basically, he just goes off like a Super Saiyan, I thought. He launches himself at both men and just screams, Pah! and we get running uppercuts back and forth, back and forth, shades of Cesaro almost. And then a wicked DDT spot onto Gulak. Tony Nese comes in for the save, only to get half and half on top of Gulak, giving us our first rear near fall of the match. Following this, though, we get Burn. She gets tagged in. We get some tag team offense. It looks like they were going for, um, I think, that impact DDT, but they did something called heavy impact as Tom Phillips is close. Got some one-two chance near fall, nothing special. Anyway, they go for electric chair. Obviously, they were going for that pop-up European corkscrew uppercut combination. But Nice, he came into play after rolling over uh, Danny Birch, I believe, and open palm striking only Lorcan on the top rope. Very ingenious. And then we get a wicked Mitsunoku driver, heavy high end on the neck. That could have been nasty on Birch by Gulak. But that pinning combination was broken up by only who basically broke it up with a flying headbutt. Shout out to somebody that we're not going to name. Anyway... Following this, though, we get that wicked 450 splash, as we said, really close in the corner. I felt like it was a little botched here and almost was a little risky, and I thought Charlotte's legs were in danger. That moonsault hit Burt's knees first in the gut. That could have been bad for both men. But anyway, it wasn't enough. It was a near fall on Burt's. Then we get a hockey fight breaking out. That's all four men showing signs of exhaustion and fatigue. They're in the middle of the ring. Chops and strikes are exchanged, and we get just melee in the middle of the ring. And then we get chop. Headbutt combination by 1-2 on both Gulak and Nice. Uppercut, impact DDT. Gulak gets pinned this time for the 1-2-3. 1-2 has now pinned both the men on this team. And you look mm-hmm. at his face, he looks confused now because not only has he lost the title, he's losing these matches now. And he lost now, not once, but twice as a tag team with Nice. And he got pinned this time too. So... With the fact that Drew Gulak's name is disclosed on the draft list, and Tony Nese's is as well, and the fact that they don't have the title anymore, but he respects the Cruiserweight division, respects us the hardest working division in all of WWE. It's really going to be interesting to see how this dynamic builds between uh, Gulak and Nese, or if it finally falls apart. Because again, what does Nese have going for him now? There's no gold. And Birch and Morgan look very strong as a tag team. You got to imagine they're going to go out to the NXT Tag Team Championship at some point. Maybe War Games. But I thought this was a uh, really nice uh, opener. So we'll see what happens uh, next week. Following this, though, we get video package for another person who has no strange, who is no stranger to the Cruiserweight division in 205 Live, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Swerve standing for confidence, eight years in the game. We get video packages of his matches from 205 Live, as well as his recent match on NXT with Roderick Strong, where he took that man to the limit until the mm-hmm. to play. And you wonder, like I said, um, he just wants to own it all. Mission accomplished. We'll see what's next for this guy right here. And then with following this, we get, like we said, recaps of the exclusives, as you pointed out, from NXT, post-NXT, for Drew Gulak, Leo Rush. Gulak saying, it hurts. I lost the title. I was champion for 100 days. Congrats to him. Uh, but it's the most competitive division again in WWE. And uh, I got caught. Leo Rush, he... Uh, he got me. But nothing endures but change, and if change is the rule, then I am the law. And then we go to Leo Rush, who is like, it's the real man. Here I am. I finally made it. Finally a champion in WWE. I guess it uh, makes all the sacrifice worth it. 
and then click, we go to a Twitter post. He says, I'm ready to take on all challengers. And Drew, if you want a rematch, I got enough of a time. Hashtag MLTH, man of the hour. So we'll see what's next for uh, Leo Rush and Drew Gulak. Bottom line is this. Leo Rush is going to be a great champion. Drew Gulak, he was a great champion. And Drew Gulak, in my opinion, is literally 205 Live itself. I know people call Mustafa Ali the soul. Cedric Alexander the heart. I might be getting that backwards. I don't know anymore. But Drew Gulak, established since day one, made that division his own, took it from the good and the bad, developed his character, developed his in-ring game. Nobody is 205 Live more, in my opinion, than Drew Gulak. God bless that man. Anyway, following this, we go into squash, because why not? What's your thoughts on this? R.R. R. Davari versus uh, Chris Bay. And in my opinion, R.R. Davari is one of the only ones that truly tries to lift the heat from the crowd. Uh, just basically a showcase for Davari to show off how good he is. Pretty much what this was about, pretty much. You want to establish that now 205 Live is right after... Fox, you know, Fox is wanting to be more sports oriented. You know, they're also seeing this stuff live. They may be thinking about possibly putting 205 Live to FS1 later down the road. So if they're thinking with that theory, they want to put on a showcase of athleticism. So, of course, you're going to put Davari out there who's got full of charisma. He's full. He's got that heel heat. He knows what he wants to do. He's being a very good character with the heel persona he plays he's very athletic and this is pretty much a showcase to show everybody hey i'm here i'm the heel i'm the bad guy here here i am pretty much as what this was was a showcase for davari yeah and he didn't insult the uh city's like sports either he just saw the city in general the best thing about vegas i can come and go while you losers are stuck here so after i beat this jabroni yeah i wonder who that was a cheap plug at i'm gonna mm. go to the crafts table I'm going to triple my money, and then I'm going to get the hell out of here. And he basically destroyed this guy. But I will say, the crowd was definitely behind their hometown boy. So, obviously, I had to buy. He established him to a degree, even though he got destroyed. We got that, um, I don't know what you call that yank, where he just crosses his arms and yanks him from the top rope. We get chance from Bay the entire match. Bay finally gets some offense in, only to get Uranagi. And then one of the most wicked finishers in WWE, in my opinion, that hammerlock lariat, that turned him inside out, game over. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And then following this, we come back from commercial for... Fuck that! Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about draft highlight. Oh, you just wait. If I have to do predictions on that shit, I'm going AEW. You just wait. Anyway. Uh, we get, uh, four again. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get draft highlight because... The Lucha House Party is no longer part of 205 Live. They are officially drafted to SmackDown on Fox. So now Ari Dabari got to establish himself with something new. Maybe he'll go after Leo Rush. We'll see. Because, yeah, Ari Dabari, he was in that whole feud with um, Lince Dorado. Well, now it's completely gone. Good luck mm-hmm. to Lucha House Party on SmackDown. I'm sure you'll do great with Rey Mysterio and Cain Velasquez there. Imagine if those five became a faction. Damn. Anyway. Mm. Which leads us into our main event. Now, I saw the 2017 street fight between these two live in my first 205 Live Live, not some redundant, live experience. I just said live like five times. Anyway, I thought this was a really good match, though. And then I figure about the ending. What the hell? But then again, it also kind of relates. And before this match, they also disclosed how... Still, more people from 205 Live that could get drafted. That could be about a GM. And we'll talk more about that a little later in the simple scan. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Chris Mace, tell me for your thoughts on this main event and the ending. Main event was pretty good. Like I said, they had the street fight before 2017. I think this was deemed the no disqualification match, what this yeah, was no deemed. DQ. So... They all had the same meanings. You could do Street Fight, Falls County, where they're pretty much all the same thing, pretty much. Yeah. There's not really much of a difference. That's potato potato kind of thing there. The match itself, I thought, was pretty damn good match. Like I said, is it was it as good as their 2017 Street Fight? No, nah, not to me. But for what it was before the ending, what happened with Mike Kanellis coming out, that kind of surprised me. Mike Kanellis with the Brian Kendrick? That's very interesting scenario storytelling-wise. Yeah. That's actually going to maybe open up something new for the future because that's a new dynamic we've never seen before. But oh. that still was like one of those shocking moments of, really? The Brian Kendrick? Mike Kanellis? What, what, what is 
What? I mean, what just happened? Plan. I mean, maybe this was planned all along, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, tell me for your moments for this match. Because, boy, were there a lot. Oh, God, there was a lot of moments. <laughs> Kendrick, Kendrick beating him down with a kendo stick. Tozawa had all those chairs in the ring going for his finish. Just, oh, my God, there was a lot of crazy shit in this match. <laughs> I just... Lord, like I said, this is a very entertaining match. That's my big. Like I said, you are like the play-by-play guy. I'm more like the color commentator guy in this show. So. <laughs> and Tom Phillips. Okay. I'll, I'll take yeah. that. I do say, oh, a lot. But anyway, I'm not Michael Cole 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, whatever you want to call me. Y'all can call me. At, at least I'm not going, oh, what a maneuver. Oh, that's great. Oh, what a maneuver. Like <laughs> a robot on autoplay. Good, good Lord yeah. Almighty. I'm not J.R. Ina, but I respect J.R. tremendously. Anyway, yeah, yeah like... so they basically hyped this match talking about how it got built. Three weeks ago, where D. Brian Kendrick turned on his so-called best friend, <clears throat> Akira Tozawa, after whacking not only him, D. Brian Kendrick, or, sorry, the Jack Gallagher with candlestick shots. And basically, we get the post-match commentary the following week where it's like, there's a lack of respect around here. It's an epidemic. And apparently, a kid was out, he'd fall for that. So now, I'm going to remind everybody that you respect D. Brian Kenner. And again, this goes back to the fact he's been on there all since day one. But episode one, he lost his Cruiserweight Championship. He came into this brand as a Cruiserweight Champion and has not had a title match since. So again, mm-hmm. there's a lot of logic to that there. But anyway, going to the match, Kendrick... No flag, no, you know, juggling and driving his arms like that. He goes in the ring. He takes the jacket off. It's all game on. It's serious. Immediately, Akira's out, whacks him in the eye. We go out of the ring. Both men, okay, let's measure up. Kendall stick. But Akira, he grabs the Kendall stick from the back first. We'll stomp on it. It's like, you're not going to get me this time. He gets the back Kendall this time. Whacks him with a Kendall stick. Kendall stick and chairs were the stories of this match mostly. And that table later. And boy, was there table chance throughout this as well. Crowd was hot, but I think they were hot more for a table than they were for other stuff here. But I digress. Anyway, following this, we get a couple of chops. And of course, one of my favorite Akira Tozawa moves. Big up, jab. I can only imagine how that feels. Ouch. Suicide dive denied with a thrown chair to the head. Hello. Where's Joey Styles? That knocked Akira Tozawa out in the next week, draping him through the rope on the apron. And then he gets driven to the steel steps twice. Fall this crowd's like, we want tables. But then we get a DDT on the chair. D. Brian Kendall just taking it all in. Crowd gets booze. So there you go. More Kendall shots. And then we get, hey, 2017. Not purple, though. Gray duct tape this time. And he literally locks him up on the ropes like a pair of handcuffs and whacks him with the Kendall stick like two or three times. Methodically, slowly, it seems, making him really take it in. A very different approach to this match versus 2017. And a much less vocal D. Brian Kendrick, until he tried to choke him out with the candlestick and says, you give up, do you give up? Anyway, after trying to choke him out, he sets up a bed of steel chairs, was going to go for a sliced bread move, gets countered, D. Brian Kendrick gets planted on the bed of chairs himself. A victim of his own creation. I had a dollar for every time I've seen that in wrestling, I tell you. Anyway, Akira Zara goes mad, looking for something, but eventually he just throws in one, two, three, five, seven, ten. Ten chairs in total into the ring, and he tries to suplex the Brian Kendrick onto them. They're snap rounds, spin rounds, both men jogging for position. In the end, Akira Zara, he gets it, suplexes him on the bed of steel chairs. That looked like it sucked. And Akira Zara did not get out of it unscathed either. As far as he took the blunt of it, I got to see Brian Kendrick. Uh, mm-hmm. And following that, we get more table chance, more table chance, and then the Brian Kendrick... Finally gets the advantage again. After Akira finally gets the crowd what they want, another table, only to get another chair thrown into his face this time. And then the Brian Kendrick comes out and whacks him with a candlestick. Again, and again, and again. And basically, following this, we finally get the table set up after Akira Dozawa kicks the Brian Kendrick in the back of the head. And he doesn't go to the top rope. He goes to the apron, but Damn, did he get some air. And he sent Tom's bomb, D. Brian Kendrick, through the table, breaks it clean in half. Crowd goes electric, explodes. One more time. I'm surprised they didn't try and do anything with the announce table, ironically. Anyway, bomb this. We finally go back into the ring. D. Brian Kendrick laid out. He's on the bed of chairs. And it looks like a kid that was going off a broke here. And I'm like, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't risk your back. I was like, okay, this is where the match is going to end. D. Brian Kendrick's going to somehow roll out of the way. As the killer's hour builds up his momentum to go for his title, Sinton Bomb. What the hell? What mm-hmm. 
So Mike Kandos comes to play, takes him on, and again, no DQ. So it was perfectly legal. And he destroys Akira Tozawa. He basically whacks him with a candlestick twice, puts a chair on his chest, whacks the candlestick on the chair, on Akira's chest. I can only imagine those vibrations did not feel great. And following this, we get the Love Hurts, as you call it, finisher from Mike Kandos, who drags the lifeless carcass, the Brian Kendrick, into the cover. And the Brian Kendrick wins this no DQ match. So now it looks like the Brian Kendrick and Mike Kanellis are a duo, each with mutual ideas of respect, where Mike Kanellis seems to not be getting respect by the general manager and his wife, and the Brian Kendrick saying he's not getting respected by the general manager at this time right now, still Drake Maverick, or the rest of the Cruiserweight division. And both men, they shake hands mutually, they embrace each other, and there you go. So now, Two men finding out for respect and opportunities that they feel they deserve that they aren't getting is now a duo, a first-time new dynamic in 205 Live. Lee Brown, Kendrick, Mike Kinnels, and Akil Ozawa, he looks disappointed and wondering what's next. And again, as of next week, none of these men might be on the brand. Who knows what's going to happen in this draft? Again, they might lose their GM. But I thought it was a very interesting way to end this match and end their premiere on Fox. So with that being said, as we always do, Let's go ahead and grade this week's episode. So this week's episode was the Friday night premiere on of 205 Live on the WWE Network. Excuse me. I just had on Fox. You built a brand new dynamic. You continue the stories. You're trying to read your superstars that are currently on the roster. But you also acknowledge the fact that some of them might not even be there anymore. They didn't really tease like who they want to be on 205 Live. But they also didn't show a lot more outside the one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, seven men, eight of you count Leo Rush tonight. I mean, so overall, I thought this was a good episode. I always am good with two matches in a squad. I feel like that's a great formula. And I enjoyed the main event. If I was comparing this to the 2017 fight I saw live, I agree. That was better, though. It also used more weapons, too. I mean, again, this match was literally defined on chairs and candlesticks. And I'm curious what's happening with Gulag and Nice next. Bet you Gulag. Good show, though. I give it three and a quarter out of five. Maybe three and a half, just because, you know, Leo Rush now, he's finally adding a new dynamic to the Cruiserweight division, being the NXT Cruiserweight champion. And I truly hope that NXT Cruiserweight title gets a redesign. Black and gold. Purple leather, I just don't care for. Chris, what was your thoughts on this week's episode of 205 Live, and how would you rate it? I would rate it three and a half. I'm going to give it an extra quarter because I thought the opening match was incredible. I thought it was well done. I liked it better than the first match that they had, and that was really well done, too. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have gone a little higher had we had, I think, more of a finish to the match and how we had. But like I said, storytelling-wise, I absolutely did like it. It was interesting. It's something new. It's something fresh. It's a new idea with Mike Kanellis and the Brian Kendrick. It's, not, it's something we haven't seen before. It's not rehashing anything old that's happened before. So I'm really interested to see how that dynamic plays. I'm also wanting to see how what's going to happen next with Lorcan and Birch as a tag team in 205. And I want to see what, what how and Tony Nese and Drew Gulak are going to rebound after the week they both had. So I'm definitely waiting to see what happens more. Yeah, and I guess we'll really find out how the Cruiserweight division shapes between Monday night with the rest of the draft and also uh, Wednesday night with the continuation of what's next for the Rush night now in the NXT Cruiserweight division. But with that being said, shout out to the people in 205 Matters Facebook group. You all rock. Uh, Zach Elias says he enjoyed the show as well. And if you all want to join in, share with your thoughts and join us in the discussion of the Cruiserweight division, I encourage you to join hashtag 205 Matters Facebook group. But with that being said... Let's go ahead and get into some simple stances. So I feel like this is an obvious one to start with. So now we know the reincarnation of the Cruiserweight division. It's now the NXT Cruiserweight division, hence the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. They now have a new guy leading the fray, Leo Rush. So here's an obvious start. Chris, in your mind, who should challenge Leo Rush next for the title? Drew Gulak needs to get his rematch first. I think this feud's far from over. I think this match, that first match they had was incredible. I think it's money. I think they can build up on it. They could do something where they do a number one contendership right. match. You take people, for a couple guys, you can take Swerve. You can take you take a few guys like Swerve. You could take maybe Kira Dezawa. You could take Lorcan. You could take you can do a six-pack challenge on NXT or 205 Live. Determine the number one contender for the 
the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Let Gulak win that. Show that he deserves to get that rematch. And let them have a credible match. Let them have that rematch at War Games. Because you got NXT War Games. Let's have the first NXT Cruiserweight Championship match at War Games. Rebook it. Leo Rush defends against Drew Gulak. That's my opinion. And then if Leo Rush is able to retain after that, then we'll go further from that. Or if Drew Gulak's able to regain the NXT Cruiserweight Championship, then definitely we'll we'll talk about it more after that. But I think that's the best idea right now for that is to continue that story. Because I think that feud is far from over. I think that feud is money right now. All right. Fair enough. Uh, shout out to also the people in Tool for the Mass People Group. They shared some of their thoughts because now I do a post spot every week now. And Zach Elias says he would like to see Swerve challenge Leo Rush, but he likes Toza, but Swerve is new and hasn't had an opportunity yet. Our old mad scientist and leader of the NXT team, Jerry Slaughter, he disclosed Devlin versus Rush needs to happen. Jordan Devlin? Whoa. <laughs> okay. With the amount of ego that guy has, and I'm sure Leo Rush ego is in check right now, but you know it's going to come because now he's the champ. I would actually like to see that dynamic play out because obviously right now Leo Rush, he's a face. Now, as far as I go, it's now NXT Cruiserweight Championship, right? Let's get some new fresh talent in this Cruiserweight division and rebound the yep. NXT 205 Live. I would actually like to see something build where you set up Leo Rush first, the former DJZ, now walking wilder. I would like to see him challenge Leo Rush for the title right now initially because, in my opinion, you're now trying to reinvent the Cruiserweight division under the XC banner, Triple H, right? So why not add some new fresh faces there? That breakout tourney gave you plenty, plenty of idea. Former X Division champion Cameron Grimes, he's another one. I think his hat's still weird, but somehow I like it. But he's a guy that is on a dominant role right now. Let's have him challenge possibly for the um, NXT Cruiserweight Championship. And here's another thing. It's NXT Cruiserweight Championship. I really wonder how far they're going to go with this. Like, are they not going to, like, connect it just to 205 and under anymore? Can anybody in NXT, NXT UK, actually challenge for this? Are we going to get some new dynamics here? Is it going to be, like, treated like an overweight title? I'm very interested to see how this shapes up. But right now, off the top of my head, I figure I like Joaquin Wider to challenge. Although, Akira Dozawa, he still needs to get rid of that first um, rain mistake off his record. Speed of which, let's go ahead and talk about, before I hand it over to you, let's go ahead and talk about this WWE draft. So we already know how it's not affecting NXT, but it seems to be affecting 205 Live, and that's just probably because Raw still telling me owns the Cruiserweight division. I still don't understand that shit. Anyway, so 30 people were supposed to be dra- in a pool overall from Friday. And were not drafted. At least three of them were Cruiserweights. We did not get any result yet at time recording for Drew Gulak, Humberto Carrillo, and Akira Tozawa. What's going to happen with these guys? Are they going to remain on 205 Live? Because, again, they don't have a choice unless they don't get drafted. Because, again, if you're not drafted, you're a free agent. You can go to any brand you want. So, I guess to sum it up, and I'll toss it over to you, Chris, it's WD draft season. Who would you like to see drafted to 205 Live? Or who do you see drafted from 205 Live to Raw or SmackDown? That's an interesting one. Like I said, Lucha House Party being on SmackDown is kind of interesting because the Fox is being more sports-oriented. I think Lucha House Party is a bad fit on there. I think they should have stayed on 205 Live. Um, that's really interesting one to me because it's really hard to figure out who could exactly do it on 205 Live. Now, if we were changing the weight, like since now we're doing stuff with NXT and it's now the NXT Cruiserweight Championship – and you're changing the weight a little bit, and you go back to the original cruiserweight weight, which was at 225 and under, yeah. then I can maybe see somebody like an Apollo Crews, who's not doing nothing, put him on 205 Live. Let's do something different. Let's have him get a revamp on his star. Look what Chad Gable did. He had two incredible matches with a gentleman, Jack Gallagher. And then, look, he had that run in the King of the Ring, et cetera, et cetera. We're not going to talk about what happened on SmackDown. That's a different story. Oh, but, yeah. but, Continue. But like I said, do you have there's opportunities for them? They can move. See, we we're talking about the main roster. Like I said, cause there's so much talent in NXT UK they could pull from there. It's not even funny. But for the main roster, I would go Apollo Cruz. Like I said, or if you're gonna eventually tell the story of Rey Mysterio going back to his roots, that I keep preaching about, go ahead and do it. He's getting closer to the end of his career. He could help establish those young up-and-coming members of 205 Live and establish them by giving them a veteran to work with. 
put him on 205 Live. Let him they do it as a tribute to where he began at in his career as a cruiserweight and let him go back and tell a story. He going back to where it all began. He wants one last run trying to get that cruiserweight championship. Now the NXT cruiserweight championship and let's do it. as he's getting closer to his career. Yeah. And, and looking at these other names here, I'm sure they would not fit necessarily under the cruiserweight type um, banner because of their weight, unless they do, like you said, a little more further weight. So let's figure about these names that weren't drafted. Currently on draft is free agents as of time recording, to my knowledge. Akira Dozawa, Cesaro, Gulak, EC3, Eric Young, Heath Slater, Humberto Carrillo, Sin Cara, Tamina, and the B team. Just from this list alone, the only one I could potentially see maybe doing some way on 205 Live is Eric Young. He is a former... X Division champion. He's also an Impact TV champion, but he's also had the top title too. EC3, he just needs a reset. Send him to NXT. And I mean, you can put Heath Slater and you can put Bo Dallas on 205 Live. I think they'd, I know at least Heath Slater looks like he would about, he would at least appear to make the weight. Bo Dallas, maybe if he dropped a few pounds, like I said, he could actually probably do some great matches. Make him a solo act again. Let him perform like he did in NX, back in NXT when he was part of NXT. The NXT champion, of all things, people will forget about Bo Dallas winning the NXT Child Championship. I gave you cookies! <laughs> yeah, I know. Like I said, let 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 him have a shot at 205 Live. Let's do something different with him. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Let's do something. Different. Even Curtis Axel, I don't think Curtis Axel can make the weight, but that's what I'm talking about. If we change the weight back to 225, like he originally was in the cruiserweight division back years ago, right. I said you could have a little bit more options of what you could do, who you could put on there if you're trying to stay at a certain weight and under and. Uh, 205 Live. But now, with it merging with NXT and doing matches with NXT, being the NXT Cruiserweight Championship, would this be the great opportunity to change that weight limit? Well, I guess only time will tell. By the way, those never executives like, woo! I did not think negative executives would like that. That was a little weird. Uh, yeah, but as far as that one of the draft goes, a lot of it was pretty predictable to me. Some of it was kind of surprising. Lucha House Party on SmackDown? Eh. Mm-hmm. We'll see. I mean, if nothing else, that does add some dynamic now to their tag team division because you do have the revival there and they are the tag champs. So maybe now you can do a normal tag team championship match between Lucha House Party and uh, the rival. And maybe Kalisto can go after, oh, I don't know, Intercontinental title if it's still on there. But I digress. Again, I guess really things will truly shape up, like I said, next week, Monday and uh, next week, Wednesday, because I still know what happened to these 10 people. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I, I would like to see that 225 because it would add some more dynamics to the Cruiserweight division. And honestly, NXT UK can also be involved in this too. Jordan Devlin was a crazy one by um, Jerry Slaughter. Kenny Williams is another one. He keeps losing, but let's see what the Lucky King can do in the Cruiserweight division. There's definitely some dynamics there, so um, we'll see. All right, so Chris, what's on your mind tonight? What do you want to talk about on Simple Stances? Okay, now, so now we, I'm glad 205 Live is still alive and well. I know a lot of people are discrediting it. It's gone. It's never coming back. Well, now it's back. It's back with a vengeance. You got it on Fox now. Now that it's on Fox, now we know they've made the title of the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. They have it. They've shown matches from 205 Live on NXT. When do you think we're going to see matchups on 205 Live since it's now on Fox now with members from NXT? Like, I want to see Roderick Strong go to 205 Live and have some and there's some matches there. Let's him face somebody like a Tony Nese. He's already been on 205 Live before. He was part of that uh, Cruiserweight tournament a couple years back when they were trying to make a challenger for the Cruiserweight Championship of WrestleMania. He's been in there before. Let's, or what new faces can we do it where we could say, okay, well... Because here's the thing I have a question about. This is what I'm wondering about. 205 Live is still can sit on after Fox, so that would be considered a main roster show. But if That's NXT, great. NXT UK, and 205 Live are all under the same umbrella, where does the where does the line go from there? Are we going to keep it at NXT as an NXT branded show, or are we going to keep it as a main roster branded show? See, that's where the confusion is going to come in right now. 
Well, it goes back to, like I said, to this day, back in 2016, Raw owned the Cruiserweight division. Now yes. it's like he owns it. And technically speaking, the 205 Live isn't on Fox. It isn't even on FS1. It probably would help the viewers if it did. It's strictly still on the WWE Network. It's just now on every week at 10 o'clock at night, immediately after SmackDown goes off the air on Fox. Whatever goes on Fox at 10 o'clock, I have no fucking idea. Uh, anyway, as far as when you blur the lines, we know that the – WWE, they go over to the UK like twice a year. So you always get that international clash between the UK and the US, even on 205 Live especially. But you also have those simple nights where they do like simply competition, like they did a couple of times already this year, between NXT and 205 Live, respectively, only on the US soil. So as far as the next collision of this, uh, I would have to say, as far as bringing more NXT stars on 205 Live, I can honestly see that happening as early as next week because now that Leo Rush is in NXT and is the NXT Cruiserweight Champion, you're always going to have more merge between the two because Triple H wants to bring everything under the NXT banner. Well, the biggest question is how will that dynamic change if they don't have Drake Maverick as the GM? Truth be told, Drake Maverick, there was no high nor tail nor tweet nor highlight or anything about him involved on this week's 205 Live. He wasn't on WWE television at all. So it really comes down to, I think, what is the future of 205 Live going to shape as? We know that it's going to continue as is after SmackDown, but as far as the inclusion of NXT Town versus their current Cruiserweight division, I think it's just going to depend who gets drafted from 205 Live to the main roster and who fills their place. Again, I sense a lot of the breakout 20 people from NXT being involved in the Cruiserweight division, because not only do they fit the weight limit, they show some amazing Cruiserweight chemistry. Angel Garza already has been involved, and he had a match with his own cousin. Her brother Carrillo. Mm-hmm. And her brother Carrillo might get drafted. If that happens, then Garza can take Carrillo's place. So yeah. I think it's going to start as early as next week. But honestly, I'm not, I don't really know until I see the full results of the draft. And again, we don't even know where these free agents are going. None has been said yet on social media or on WWE's website. I just looked. So not only do we have the pool of 40 on Monday, we got 10 unknowns right now. That's a total of 50 people. And if tag teams get split, that even makes it even more complex. So honestly, I'm only going to watch Raw because of this draft because I want to see how it shapes the Cruiserweight division. So with that being said, I am just going to say this. I don't think we're going to know the answer until next week, Wednesday at the earliest, next week, Friday the latest. But I, yeah. I do like that interesting stance. And again, right now, we have no idea what to think about going to happen next week. The only thing that could happen next week right now on 205 Live is maybe if Nieder gets drafted, because they are still part of the draft, Akira Tozawa and Mike Nuss could go after again each other in a match, but this time they Brian Kendrick be uh, in Mike Nuss's corner. And as far as Jack Gallagher goes, don't know what his future holds either. He might just go straight to the NXT UK. Mm. With that being said, so we, could, we took a hiatus from our list. I think pretty much right now, I'm kind of thrown off now from our list because I wasn't sure. We're at number 15. Yeah, we're at number 15, suddenly number 14. I, I just closed my number 15, but it's Dale and Tommy versus, uh, what did I say? Mustafa Ali, excuse me. So let's just go ahead and wrap that up real quick, and then we'll talk about number 14. What was your number uh, 15? Because this actually marks number 14. Well, my number 15 was Chad Gable versus the gentleman Jack Gallagher, their first matchup. I thought oh. that was an incredible that was an incredible match. Uh, it showcased how talented Chad Gable was breaking away from the tag team scene as a singles competitor. That finish, even though we all know now what we didn't know then, that it was botched. He was not supposed to have won by a count out. Yeah. You know, because gentlemen, Jack Yarder slipped. You know, hey, botch, accidents happen. Shit happens in wrestling. It happens. Uh, but what it did was, in that mistake, what it did was set up another incredible match later down the road. Now, where that is on my list, I'm not going to say yet, but that's that was my number 15. All right, fair enough. So, number 15, it feels like the pinnacle. Oh, sorry. Yeah, number 14 for me. Now we're now we're getting into the more serious matches. I'm like the top 15, okay? I said I was going to try and change it up, not be so chronological. We're, st- we're all the way in 2019 now, where the Cruiserweights truly have shined on this brand. When I think about the involvement of the Cruiserweight division, since WrestleMania especially, I got to think about who really passed the torch. So my number 14 is actually going to be the initial to this, I went with Oni Lorcan versus Cedric Alexander. 
It was only Logan's debut. He was out to prove a point. He was trying to become the Cruiserweight champion. But said Alexander, he was to prove that he was still 205 Live, even though we knew he was going to the main roster pretty much pretty soon. And following this, Cedric Alexander, he had an amazing showing, and he advanced in this Cruiserweight Championship tournament, beating only Lorcan. It led to some events later, though, because only Lorcan, at one point, he seemed kind of desperate. He almost, like I said, he pulled the ties, but in the end, he fell victim to a very effective finish in WWE, Lombard check. So keeping it simple, my number 14 is Cruiserweight Championship Tournament, only Lorcan versus Cedric Alexander. All right. So number 14, what is yours, Chris? Yeah, you t- yeah, that was one of mine that I had earlier on my list as well. But this is also, also that's interesting because my number 14 is also a different match. Same two men it is Lorcan versus Cedric Alexander. But this time it was Cedric Alexander's final match in, in 205. I say NXT, I would have been a botch. But 205 <laughs> Live, it was Cedric Alexander's final match. It was time for Lorcan to prove point. Lorcan was determined he, the Cedric, was going to pass the torch to him. Cedric had already been announced he was going to Raw. This was his last appearance. Lorcan was a man on a mission. He was determined he was going to beat Cedric Alexander. You are going to pass this torch to me. Let me carry the comp. Let me carry two of five live into the next into the future. Let me do it. Cedric pretty much determined you're going to have to beat me. They had an incredible match. That was that was. If you want to see Cedric Alexander as one of his best matches, go watch his final match in Two of Live against Only Lorcan. He made Only Lorcan look like he was a million dollars in that match. Phenomenal match. The ending was incredible. Getting uh, Lorcan paying respect. Lorcan getting the win. Lorcan paying respect. Cedric Alexander. Cedric Alexander taking a bow to everybody, telling him bye as he was leaving Two of Five Live. That was the perfect way to end Cedric Alexander's run on 205 Live, and I hope one day he does get to come back and have some more incredible matches on 205 Live. Not to mention, yeah, I mean, Nadja McGinnis was even shocked by that outcome because not only did it pass the torch only Lorcan, you knew it was passing the torch, but only Lorcan kicked out Cedric Alexander's lumbar check. Only yes. one other person to this day has done that, and that is Buddy Murphy. He yep. thought that was it, and Nadja was like, oh, ho, ho, ho. And, yeah, right there you knew, that's it, Cedric. He's officially passing the torch. That was a phenomenal match, and who knows? That might come up on my countdown, too. But with that being said, that concludes this week's edition of 205 Live Matters. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in and joining in on this new schedule. It's a new day. It's a new Cruiserweight division. It's your same full, simple host here. Who knows? There might be some new interesting dynamics to this um, platform as we continue to develop the cruiserweight division only time will tell thank you for all of course for tuning in and joined in the conversation and the fun chris mace as always a pleasure sir again we're still on <laughs> anything you want to talk about uh and, and plug and where can people find you uh, you can find me now. I have Facebook again at Christopher Mace. Pretty much that's there. You'll see all the wrestling content I post on there. Uh, if you want to friend request me on there and look at wrestling content, that's a place, great place to go and look up all the new shows from the NX team as well. You can also check out my YouTube channel at the Holiday Christopher Mace. Uh, thank you for the 52 subscribers I have so far. That's incredible. I would have never thought I would have gotten to 52 subscribers. Heck, I didn't think anybody would really watch, honestly. So I'm really yeah. humbled and honored by that. Um, but you can go there, too, and check out all the newest episodes where I do holiday opinions, which are really quick bites of what I think of what's going on currently in wrestling with different things. And then my show, once a week, I do the holiday break where I pick different wrestling subjects and discuss and analyze and discuss different things. We'll have a new episode. Episode four will be out coming out here sometime today. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Chris Mace, and you can, like I said, you can support every other member of the NX team. Uh, I could ramble down their channels, but I get ever learn them. One day I'm going to make a list and actually learn this. So, but the best way to do it, if you go to my YouTube channel, you can go to wrestling content on my list and you can see all the newest episodes from Stefan and Jerry to Colin Andrews, to the simple man himself, to Cindy G, appearances by Good Brother Chris. Uh, you can see the newest, uh, the last episode from Jeff Meacham so far on his channel. You can see James and Owen's newest work. And when Evan is able to appear on video again, you'll see Evan as well since he's the newest member. But that's the easiest way to find all their content. You can look at there. And if you like them, you can like, share, and subscribe to their content as well. All right, simple enough. Boy, aren't you busy? Congrats on 52. Well-deserved, man. Simple content, just like the chopping block and front cuts like Colin Andrew. 
Great stuff to watch. Great stuff to tune in. If you're a YouTube Red subscriber, great stuff to listen to. Anyway, thank you as always, sir. Pleasure. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know more about me, because you're like, I've never seen this guy before. Who is he? Know this. I'm just a simple man. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I am a lifelong fan of wrestling. So if you want to follow me and talk anything wrestling, the five brands of WWE or anything outside of that, including but not limited to New Japan for Wrestling, Rio Bonner, Impact Wrestling, Stardom World, NWA, AEW, and more, let me up on Twitter. NoDQ.com forward slash Noah takes to my Twitter page. Or follow my simple YouTube channel at YouTube.com forward slash user forward slash Noah Foster 210. Thank you to the 92 that have subscribed to me as well as the over 4,000 views to my channel that I have. My, I'm, I'm approaching my one-year anniversary of my YouTube channel, so I will probably do a live stream of my recently new podcast forum, Civil Man's Rand Wrestling, where I talk about a week of wrestling I watch in 30 minutes or less and give some brief points. Maybe I'll do like an extended version. Only time will tell. At the heart of my channel, you'll also find, of course, hashtag 205 Life Matters, my weekly platform discussing the 205 Life brand and cruiserweights every week, and so much more. Predictions, recaps, simple takes, reviews, and all sorts of other stuff wrestling, and nice neat playlists for you, including independent wrestling content and support independent wrestling folks. And if you haven't figured it out by now, support NoDQ. That's the reason I'm in YouTube. Forever indebted to the NoDQ Galaxy and the Team NoDQ family. Buy a shirt, buy something, buy some merch. NoDQ.com forward slash merch. Follow NoDQ on all your social media platforms. Your opinions matter. There's a comment section of everything at the official website. Polls, columns, mean gifts, reviews, recaps, sexy female picks. You name it, it's there. Primarily WWE wrestling with a little bit of AEW and independent wrestling content as well. And stay tuned for my YouTube channel where I'll be doing predictions on New Japan Pro Wrestling, King of Pro Wrestling, as well as Bound for Glory predictions. I might even challenge Andre Corbell on predictions on that and go follow his channel, Wrestling with Wrestling. Great content. Also supported by, of course, the Troll Slayer Virtue and the smartest man in the room, apparently, Robbie Vice. And as always, I'd like to close. Support your wrestling outlets for big and small, and let's keep growing this incredible, diverse, unique, elite wrestling community together. Simple as that. But with that, Thank you so much, everybody, who tuned in for the first time or have continued tuning in this series. Greatly appreciate it. If you like this, join the Hashtag Two of Them Matters Facebook group and join the conversation. And as far as this goes, please like, share, subscribe, comment, tell a friend. Leave your thoughts on the Cruiserweight Division and 205 Live in the comments down below. Whether you believe in me, you critique me, you criticize me, I don't care. I stand by my stance, and I'm all about just interacting. It's all about diplomacy. Just be respectful. Don't be a bully. Be a star, and not the PR version either. Be a real thing about that in life. But with that being said, thank you again. And until the next video, whether here on NoDQ, somewhere else in YouTube or beyond, because I am starting some other series, including the Wednesday Night War Roundup with my friend Eric, and go follow his channel, at Neo Reality Entertainment. Great stuff, great recaps, great opinions. And also I'll be doing some other stuff too with wrestling discussions later on, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, enjoy life, enjoy wrestling. Just, you know, be yourself, have fun. And, you know, be respectful to all, because we're all just fans of our own degree. And until the next video, whether here on YouTube or somewhere beyond in cyberspace, either with my friend Chris Mace here or somebody else, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Y'all have a good day now. And remember, and this is now more true than ever, because it's still going, but now it's just being reinvented. Whether you hate me for it or you believe in me, I stand by this, and I'll stand by it to the day I die. 205 Live matters. Always. Indeed. <laughs> Number one. Bye, everybody.